Hey everybody, it's Chad from Sticks Blog. Uh, so last weekend I went, uh, met a couple of friends, and we did about a 40 mile section hike on the AT from Carver's Gap to uh, Dennis Cove Road, uh, or better yet, it was actually uh, Concord Hostel. Um, anyway, I just finished my trip report for that uh, that hike, so if you haven't checked it out already, uh, be sure to just head over to my blog and uh, just search through. You'll find that that posting is the one of the most recent now. Uh, anyway, just give that a read through. Lots of pictures. I think there's about four different videos on there, uh, and then of course I you know wrote up what happened throughout the day. So uh, anyway, today I want to do a video and talk about some of the gear that I used on that hike. Uh, this is just my typical post hike gear talk video. Uh, as far as the hike itself, um, we started uh, last Thursday at Carver's Gap. When we started, the conditions were probably about the worst conditions that uh, you can kind of backpack in, uh, at least in my experience so far. Uh, it, the temperatures were pretty much right there at freezing, about 32, 33 degrees. Um, the grounds and stuff were frozen, so uh, some of the trails and stuff were kind of slippery. Um, there was a mixture of rain and sleet and even some snow falling. Um, and then because we started at Carver's Gap for about the first, uh, well within the first 15 miles there was a number of balds that we hiked over so we were on some exposed ridge lines and stuff. And that just made the wind gusts coming through. Uh, I'm not exactly sure how strong the wind gusts were, I didn't have anything to measure it with, but uh, according to some of the weather stations and stuff for up around Hunt Mountain, they were, I think, around 35 or 40, to, uh, 40 miles per hour. All I can say is they were rough. Uh, there were a couple of times, if you know, if you weren't paying attention or if you kind of made a bad step or something and the wind hit, uh, there was a couple of times it kind of almost knocked me over, so it's a good thing I had my trekking poles with me and kind of helped me keep my balance on a couple of, a couple of occasions. Um, but anyway, all that just made for really miserable hiking conditions. Of course, because of the weather on the balds, um, you know, we picked the balls because we was hoping the weather would be good and we'd get some good views. Of course, there were no good views to be had. But that's not to say that the trip was bad. It really made for some interesting hiking, too, just because of all the fog and everything coming in and all the balls. Uh, it just made for a completely different scenario from the last time I did that section. So I was really excited about the weather, even though it was so miserable. Um, as far as Friday, uh, it was kind of dreary, a little bit of wind, uh, kind of rained all day. Uh, fog was still all over the place, so not really any good views or anything to be had that day. And the temperatures had actually jumped up to about mid-40s. Um, Friday, uh, by mid-afternoon, or actually early afternoon, the sun kind of came out, cleared things up. Uh, by late afternoon, uh, before we finished our hike, uh, the sun actually kind of, you know, it kind of got a little warm on us. Um, and then Sunday it was kind of overcast, a little bit of snow, a uh, little bit of sun, uh, but we were hiking out Sunday, so we didn't get to experience too much of the weather on that day. Um, so anyway, we hiked through a, a number of different um, scenarios as far as weather conditions. Um, so I got to use, I got good all-around use with a lot of my gear. I'm not going to talk about everything I carried. There are just a couple of things I want to talk a little bit about. Some of them I've talked about before. Some of them I haven't really. Um, but anyway, I'll start with my backpack, and also just so you know, um, well, that's a good good way to feed into it. The backpack I used was my Z-Packs Art Blast backpack, and this is the 60 liter version. Um, I have nothing but absolute great things to say about this pack. Uh, since I've got it, it's pretty much been my go-to pack, um, especially for colder colder weather conditions and stuff like that when I need to pack a little more, or if my children or my wife comes with me, I've got a little extra room to pack some things so their packs aren't so heavy. Um, on this particular hike, according to my gear spreadsheet, I was at 21 and a half pounds. Using my kit, my bathroom scales, it was getting almost 23 pounds. So for the sake of the argument, I'm going to go with I carried 23 pounds total in this pack weight to start out, um, and it rode great. Um, I've carried a little bit more on, on it or inside it with other hikes, and I've never had any issues with the way this pack carries. Saying that, I will say that they've recently come out with a new backpack called the Arc Hall, and they've reworked and uh, reconstructed the way the, uh, the frame actually attaches to the hip belt, and because of that, they say that it's going to transfer hip better, or transfer weight better to the hips, and give you an even better ride. But like I said, um, I've carried 23 pounds on this hike, and I've carried as much as almost 25 pounds on other hikes. I can't really complain about the uh, carrying capabilities of this pack. 
So if you're looking for a good pack, uh, I definitely suggest you check out the Arc Glass. Or maybe if you're carrying a little more weight, maybe even the Arc Hall. Uh, but anyway, it's a great pack. Um, as far as the pack liner, I did carry my XFED uh, Send Mat Pad again on this hike. And because I carried that pad, I also carried the Schnozzle Bag to blow it up. And of course, I dual used that, uh, multi-purposed it. And it was also the pack liner for all my down items too. Um, and like I said, there was a lot of rain, a lot of just wet precipitation on this hike. So I carried all of my down and it was not an issue whatsoever. Uh, as far as the pack cover, I carried my z Packs pack cover again. Um, of course that just covered the outside of my pack. I like to carry this because there's um, things inside my pack that I don't, or outside of my pack that I don't want to get wet. Um, so I, I always carry this pack cover. It's just over an ounce in weight, so in my opinion the weight is justified, um, especially for what it does. Now I will say that this is one of their first ones that they made, and it's made from 0.51 ounce Cuban. I believe now they use 0.74 ounce Cuban to make their pack covers. Um, and saying that, I have found uh, a bunch of little holes in this, and I've taped it up. Dave was actually taping his up on the third night. And that made me think about it, so when I got home, I kind of looked at mine and saw a bunch of holes. And that kind of explained why some of the inside of the pack cover was kind of, kind of moist. Um, so I taped it up. Uh, it's definitely still in working order. Um, no reason at this point in time to replace it. Um, but I, I do understand that, you know, uh, probably after a couple more years of regular use, which is not super often, but after some more years of regular use, I'll probably have to replace it with something. But for now, I'm totally happy I have it and I can continue to look forward to using it. Um, as far as my shelter, I carried my Z-Pax Hexamed, uh, Solo Plus Tarp, and the Hexanet. Uh, the first night, like I said, we stayed in Over Mountain Shelter, which is the big red barn on my AT. Um, since I stayed inside there, I did kind of string my Hexanet up from one of the rafters up top, and that just kind of allowed me to kind of have something to throw all of my stuff into to keep it from rolling out on the floor and everybody stepping on it or whatever. Uh, the second night, we stayed in Mountaineer Falls Shelter. Uh, I didn't use my Hexanet or, of course, my tarp for that at all. And then the third night at Moreland Gap Shelter, we actually pitched our uh, shelters. Uh, the night was pretty, and we took advantage of it. <clears throat> uh, of course, still nothing but great things to say about that. Uh, woke up, it was completely dry, um, and I was really expecting there to be a little condensation on the inside. Um, but surprisingly, everybody's stuff was completely dry. Um, even those that had the big double wall shelters had them closed up and everything. So uh, that was really nice. But anyway, I still got a lot of love for my Z-Pax Hexanet and Hexamed shelter. Look forward to using that a lot more. Saying that, I will say that I have another item on order, and I'm really looking forward to that coming in. More on that later. Uh, as far as sleeping gear, I already mentioned that I carried my Xfed Sin Mat pad, and I also carried an 8 inch, uh, just a thin uh, closed cell foam pad to use in conjunction with the pad. Um, to me, this pad is just not near as warm as my X-Lite, or even my older Neo Air, which had a 2.5R value. Uh, this, I believe, is 3.1, uh, and I'm sorry, I just, it doesn't seem to be near as warm as my x lights or my Neo Air pads are. Because of that, I don't think I'll be seeing myself carrying this pad much in colder weather anymore, even when using, um, uh, CCF pads in conjunction with this pad. I think I'm just going to go back to my x light because it's a warmer, bigger, lighter air pad. Um, however, in some of my uh, early spring or even late fall hikes, it might be okay. Saying that, I did use it in January on a hike. Uh, temperatures were down to 6 degrees and I used this, but I also used two uh, closed cell foam pads. One of them a fourth of an inch thick and another an eighth of an inch thick. And I stay warm. Uh, but on this hike, I think that there were some nights that I was kind of cool, and I think it was coming from up underneath me. So I have a hike next month, and I'm probably going to take this pad again, but I don't expect the temperatures to be near as cold. Um, but anyway, uh, the Simac UL7, it, it is a comfortable pad. Surprisingly, it's turned out to be more comfortable than they used to be for me. Uh, it's just I don't think that the, uh, I think the Neo Air still beat these out uh, pretty easily. Um, as far as my bag, I carried the Montvale Down Downhugger 800 number 3. Uh, I've used this a couple of times now um, in the field. And for the most part, I think it's actually a pretty accurately rated bag for me, which is 30 degrees. 
However, I will say that there were a couple of times that I got a little cool on this past hike, and I'm kind of wondering if part of that was due to the pad um, as well as the bag. I think if I would have had a little more warmth underneath me, it wouldn't have been quite so bad. I never got cold, never started shivering or anything like that, but I was just kind of feeling cool. Uh, now, saying that, I never wore my down pants. I did carry down pants. I didn't wear my down pants inside it. Um, I, I was basically in a uh, pair of Under Armour 9-inch boxer briefs and um, my Patagonia Cat 4 top. Uh, and then, of course, I had my, my wool socks. And I did have my down socks on at, at, at times. Um, but anyway, um, right now I'm going to move the, I'm going to bump this up to about a 35 degree bang for me. Uh, with potential that it's still a 30 degree bag for me. Um, I'll definitely be carrying this with me on the hike next month. So I'll see how, how that goes then. Um, other than that, I carried my Goose Feet Gear down pillow and my Exped uh, Ultralight pillow set up. Um, it just absolutely does not work at all with this pad. With my Neo Air, it works tons times better uh, just because the, the little shock cord that I put on it holds it in place on my Neo Air a lot better than this. Uh, with this, it just slips right off the end. So that's also another disadvantage to this pad over my, my Neo Airs. Uh, as far as my cook kit, on this particular hike, I carried the uh, 0.9 liter titanium ultralight tie, or cook pot, and I carried the Sidewinder caldera cone, um, and I also carried the Starlight stove. Um, this is the first hike I've ever had issues trying to light my Starlight stove. And it may have, it was that first night when it was so cold, everything was just wet. You know, there was fog coming through the, the barn. Uh, and that may have been part of it, but I did have some difficult times getting my uh, my Starlight stove lit. Saying that, it, it still performed great. Um, I had to be careful uh, up in the barn because there's a lot of um, spaces between the boards on the floor. So air was coming up between that because of all the wind blowing through the barn. And that was affecting my, uh, my burn times and, and stuff like that. So I uh, definitely do have to to watch out for things like that. Um, but anyway, it worked out great other than that. Also, uh, as far as food, I carried the, uh, the pad thai, the Caesars pad thai. I carried that for two nights. There were a couple of little differences that I made to it. Uh, I really enjoyed that, that meal out on the trail. I also bought a good to go, it's a three bean chili or something like that. It's their chili meal. Um, last, or in January, I had the curry thai meal. And it was pretty good. I really enjoyed it. But this three bean chili or whatever it's called, uh, I hate to say terrible, but it, it was not good at all. I mean, after three days of hiking, uh, you would expect that pretty much anything that you, you bit into would just be great. Um, but I wasn't very thrilled at all. First off, there was just no seasoning. There was no, It was just bland. Uh, and then on top of that, a lot of the beans and stuff didn't rehydrate. And it actually sat for about 25 minutes instead of the listed 20 minutes. Um, I definitely won't be buying that one again. Uh, I know they make a couple other meals. I may try those sometime, I'm not sure. Uh, but the chili meal, I can't recommend it. it. I mean, there was no chili taste to it whatsoever. So that was kind of a bummer. Um, and I was really looking forward to that. Um, but it is what it is. Um, let's see. Uh, as far as my rain gear, of course, um, I carried my Montane Minimus Smock. I worked out good, kept me dry. However, after hiking for two days and basically steady rain, of course it did wet out just about everywhere. Um, especially on the sleeves where it kind of stayed bunched up and then right up here on the bottom around the waist where it was kind of hemmed up uh, around my hip belt on my backpack. Um, but I mean it kept me dry so I'm still happy with it. Um, don't have any plans of getting rid of it. Still really like the kangaroo pocket on the front. I think that's uh, that's awesome. I did find that uh, at night when I had to go use the privy, that's a great place to put my little bag with my toilet paper and stuff because it's like I have it right there. I don't have to set it on the ground or find some place to set it. So uh, that was actually nice. <laughs> uh, but anyway, still liking my, my Monte Minimus Small. I carried my Go Light Chrome Dome umbrella. Um, used it a lot the first two days. Um, the entire first day I used it, the wind blew it out inside out a couple of times, but it's got plastic, uh, it's a plastic skeleton on the inside, so I was able to just flip it back out and it didn't break it. Uh, Dave's is a little older than mine, 
uh, and it turned his inside out at least once I know, maybe I think more. Uh, but I think it actually broke some of the hinges one time when it turned it inside out. So, uh, But anyway, uh, the second day I didn't use it for most of the day. Then about the second half I used it. I still really like my umbrella, although um, like any other type of gear, there is a time and a place for it. Um, and uh, it worked out well. Uh, this is definitely going to stay in my kit if I'm expecting any kind of rain. And then I also carried my uh, Z-Packs Cloud Kill. Pretty much wore that the entire first two days as well. Um, and I have nothing but good things to say about that. I even met another hiker uh, hiking out by the name of David. And he was wearing his as well. So I think the rain kilts are just awesome. Uh, especially for that kind of weather. So, um, And uh, I carried my North Face Verta wind jacket. It seems like wind jackets are really hit or miss. Uh, on this trip, just because... It was such extreme temperatures from super freezing and raining um, to warm and sunshiny. Uh, there was not very many, actually I think the only time I used this maybe it was one or two nights to sleep in. Um, but there wasn't a whole lot of, of times that I needed this wind jacket. Um, which is one reason that I like this wind jacket because it only weighs 2.9 ounces. Um, I could get a, a lighter one from Z-Packs that would save me about another ounce, but honestly, uh, right now with the rest of my kit, I'm not looking for spending another $115 to save an ounce, especially when this one works just fine. Um, but anyway, the wind jacket, sometimes it's awesome and sometimes it's just there. Uh, so I'm glad that it weighs as little as it does uh, because this time it was just there. Um, and then of course my Montbell uh, X-Lite Anorak, i got to say, uh, the more I use this, the more I love it. I'm glad that I sold my ultralight down inner parka and my regular x light and got this uh, because this is the best of both of those worlds and uh, just nothing but good things to say about this thing. This thing will definitely be a part of my kit uh, for any cold weather hike. So that's awesome. Um, I think that about sums most of my stuff up. Um, like I said, um, or not like I said, but on the second night, um, we stayed at Mountaineer Falls Shelter. And I don't know what it was, probably some food I ate just kind of upset my stomach. But I found myself needing to use the potty uh, within uh, three times within about two, two and a half hours. So this actually got a pretty good bit of use. Uh, more use than I usually get out of a trail on a, uh, a trail. For the last, well, since these came out on the Kickstarter program, I've been carrying these Deuce of Spades. Uh, it's an aluminum trowel that weighs 0.6 ounces. Uh, but a couple months ago, Lawson Klein uh, sent me his titanium. Uh, I think he calls it the Tide Deuce Scoop or something like that. Uh, but anyway, so I carried it for this hike, and I got a lot of good use out of it. Uh, I'm not going to lie. Uh, you see what it is. It's thin titanium. It is all rounded, no edges or anything like that. But still... Some of that ground, it's a lot of rocks, a lot of roots and stuff. It, uh, it kind of digs into your palm, so it's not the most comfortable. Um, but I will say that it is very sturdy. I mean, this thing is tough. Um, I, th I think it's going to be a lot tougher than this one. But, of course, it comes at a, a weight disadvantage. This one weighs 0.8 ounces, whereas this weighs 0.6. Um, not, and I think this one will be plenty fine. I'm not saying it's not tough. I think that overall this one's just tougher. Uh, but anyway, uh, I just kind of put a little mini carabiner on it so I can kind of keep it clipped outside my pack. Um, I was glad to have it on this hike, <laughs> I gotta say that. Uh, but anyway, that's about all there is to say for that. It's a pooper scooper. Uh, and then probably the last thing I'm gonna talk about is I decided to carry this Bear Vault 450 canister again. This is the only second hike I've ever carried it on. I bought this thing used a couple of months ago. Um, for a really good price, only like 30 bucks shipped, and it works great. Uh, but I opted to carry this just because I knew that it was going to be raining so much that I didn't want to have to go and hang a bear bag uh, in the rain. So I decided, you know, I'm going to make use of this thing. My pack weight, like I said, it was at most 23 pounds. I could have saved, obviously, just over 2 pounds by not carrying this, um, but uh, it did, those extra 2 pounds didn't hurt me at all. Um, I actually also carried a battery charger, which weighed almost, well, it was 12 ounces with the cable. So you can see I threw in a couple of luxury items that I didn't need, and this was definitely one of them. Uh, but anyway, I was able to obviously fit all of my food in this. You can fit about four days, well, 
it's listed at about four days worth of food is what you can fit in here. I was only out for three and a half days, so I easily fit all my food in here. Um, and then at night, um, I was able to just go and basically set this next to my tent or in the corner of the shelter and uh, just leave it there. Now let me say, some folks might say something about leaving it inside the shelter or you're supposed to put it outside. Nobody inside the shelter had a problem with it, so I didn't have a problem with it. Uh, but anyway, it was nice uh, because I was able to just kind of grab my food there. Uh, honestly, mice is what I was more worried about than anything. Um, and I believe that mice definitely would have uh, gotten into our food had it been a bag and I not hung it. Um, so by going with this, this gave me a lot of protection and just a lot of comfort. Uh, of course, it came at a big weight disadvantage, but, you know, that was part of it. So anyway, uh, that's some of the gear that I used. Um, of course, you know, that's not all the gear that I used. Uh, but anyway, those are the things that kind of stuck out to me and I just kind of want to talk about. So I appreciate you watching. If you have any comments or questions about this gear or any other gear that are here with me, I'll, I'll definitely post a link to my gear list. Um, just hit me up with a question or whatever, and I'll do my best to reply back to you. And uh, I appreciate you watching, and I'll see you next time. Later.